Hi, my name is Kasia, and I have an unhealthy obsession with niche Facebook groups. And one of them that has a special place in my heart is called I Love My Polish Heritage Group. Why? That's a good question that I should probably save for my next therapy session. Let's just say it perfectly combines my three very special interests. Facebook groups, old people, and my complicated relationship with the culture of the United States of America. I am Polish, as you can probably hear. I was born, grew up and currently live in Poland, which apparently doesn't come without saying. Not in the United States, at least, as I realized when I was there for the first time. That's when my colleague said to me that her friend is also Polish, and only from the context of the conversation was I able to conclude that her friend was never, in fact, been to Poland, nor does she speak the language. Does it make a difference? my colleague asked. Well, it kinda does to me. At first, it felt really weird to hear people say I'm Italian, I'm Irish, I'm Polish, when what they really meant was my ancestors came here from. Nobody really cares that much about their heritage or background in the other parts of the world that I've been to. And there are some obvious reasons why. The US is a relatively young country that was formed under a specific set of circumstances. Circumstances of sudden and violent colonization. A lot of American families have a quite recent history of immigration. Arriving at the new world, those families wanted to preserve and pass on their culture. They often formed tight communities and experienced discrimination from other cultural or ethnic groups. That context makes it very clear why so many Americans still identify with the nationality of their ancestors. The Facebook group they form are typically filled with family recipes or pictures from local festivals or interesting facts about Polish culture, for example. You know, it's usually wholesome content, but not always, <laughs> but usually. So why am I making fun of those people? Am I just mean? Yes, but let's not forget that some things can be really innocent and really funny at the same time. And that's okay. Not everything has to be problematic to be worthy of mockery. I am obviously not punching down here. Because let's be honest, when somebody asks a question about a very specific Polish word, and other Americans, instead of asking someone who actually speaks the language, proceed to just make shit up, <laughs> It's really hard not to laugh. Gotta love the name my customer put on his boat. Nadzydzrowie. We had one on Lake Michigan called Zoto Jest. Somewhere on Lake Michigan, there is a boat called... What is that? And I think it's beautiful. Git yet. What is this? Did you eat yet? How is it Polish? Not Polish. It is where I live. Don't be all wound up. Dien dobre all! Are there any Polish people from Florida? I am wondering if I have any spolokatorów. It's dzień dobry. Mm, actually, I went to Prague and they told me this is how it's pronounced. But thank you for your opinion. You see, this is just a matter of opinion. There is no way of telling how Polish words are actually pronounced. My mom used to call me a Sava when I would come home from the bar. She said it meant bar fly. I wanted to get a tattoo of a fly sitting at the bar and the word, but I can't find anything remotely like Sava. Any ideas? Thank you. I think they meant Sova, which means owl. It would be amazing though if they actually went with it and got a tattoo of a fly captioned owl. For me, the best tattoos are always those that confuse the hell out of everybody. I'm glad we have a sense of humor. Nostrovia. What's Nostrovia? Polish-American version of Nazwodwie. It's Nazdrowie. It's so easy to Google. Why are they doing this? Thank you for letting me join. Love to read up on our heritage and looking forward to learning more. 
Jinkulula. Please correct my spelling. I could correct them and say it's Jinkuye, but Jinkulla just sounds so much better. From now on, it's Jinkulla. Jinkulla, Jinkulla. Jinkulla. And by far, my favorite are all the variations for the traditional Polish dish Gobombki. Gajibis, Gahuknus, Golumbki, Gołumki, Golwanki, Gołapki, Gumpki, Goblaki, Golmakis. You burned them, Golmakis. It's burned. These people are wrong. But it doesn't mean they are doing something wrong. They think they know how to spell something. They don't. Not a big deal. I myself have probably done like a dozen mistakes already in this video. Although I would never argue with a native English speaker that my English is better than theirs. Never mind, it's fine. It gets a little bit weirder though when they actually decide to permanently tattoo those words on their body. Rodvina. It has a spelling mistake. Educate me, please. Was it supposed to be family? If yes, then it's Rodzina. I've spent a couple months researching and always came up with the V. I guess it's time for a touch-up after 12 years anyway. Thanks. Lynn, be so real with me right now. How many months exactly did it take you to research one word? What ancient grimoires did you have to recover from the bottom of the ocean? And how did you still come up with the wrong word? Stężenie. Stężenie. As in concentration of X in Y? Yes. Concentration, strength, focus, etc. The falcon is for guidance and reminding me of where I come from and where I'm going. Sarah. Sarah. Just admit it. You thought it meant focus. By the way, on the Polish emblem, it's an eagle, not a falcon. Mr. Belaski, why did you have to crucify that poor eagle on a sword? And with the maple leaves around it? Are Canadians coming for us? Why eagle is facing wrong way? Because it is a Polish eagle. It's okay, Barbara, please don't scream at me. Why is it so red? Is it burned? It's burned. Okay, we had our fun, but it's still fine. It's their body. They can do whatever they want with it. And they have every right to make fun of me. A white Polish girl with a dreamcatcher tattoo. I strongly believe one day I will meet a Native American girl with a matryoshka doll on her arm. And then we'll hug and the world will finally come together. There's another level to this iceberg, however, and it's full of people convinced that they have very famous and very important ancestors. You don't go through all those ancestry DNA tests just to see like 12 generations of peasants, right? My great-great-grandparents on my mom's side were a duke and a duchess of Poznań. I was thinking about putting my family crest on a shirt, but I have no idea what my family crest looks like. Any ideas where I can look up the image? I am a second-generation Polish-American mulash. Margaret, I don't know how to tell you this, but your surname literally means Mason. Your family crest is probably a brick or an eye in a triangle. As an American descendant of Jagiełło, I thank you so much for keeping the memory and glory of my ancestors alive. No problem, dude. This guy just googled Crest Wisła and he just assumed that his family crest is an emblem of a town called Wisła. Probably the first thing that came up. My babcia's maiden name is Leszczyński. She is likely a descendant of Polish King Stanisław Leszczyński. That makes my son Jasiu a Polish prince. So by royal decree, 
Prince Yasiu declares every member of this page a little Polish. My husband's babcia owned six villages. I wouldn't mind if he inherited only one of them. I was born in a village in Poland, so it would be just perfect for me. Michalin, darling, since the days of your husband's busia, we kind of resolved the whole owning a village thing, as well as owning people who live in said village. And I was sure that you in America also already dealt with that. You probably start seeing the problem now. The problem with how Americans treat Poland and people from Poland. It really seems to me like they treat Polish people as some kind of noble savages. People who used to live simple but dignified lives until their country disappeared under the ocean, like Atlantis just after the World War II. And since then, it only exists in the memories of their pushas. Here is, for example, a comment on illiteracy problem in Poland. It depends on how you define literate. If in the modern term of able to read and write, they may not have. But if it was more a case of being able to read the weather, know when to milk a cow or how to gauge when the wheat had to be taken in, well, they were probably extremely literate in that regard. Do you see what I mean? What kind of snacks do Polish people eat? I mean, something like a potato chip. Potato chips, Michelle. We have potato chips in Poland. We do have potato chips in Poland, you know. Yeah, recently imported with the foreign army. I don't know about that. I've been able to buy Polish chrupki at my local Polish store in the US for many years, so... And you believe they came from Poland? No junk food in Poland. Fried pork skin with hot sauce. Cold leftover pierogi. Fried pickles. Kielbasa. I've been to Poland many times, both on business and to see relatives. Honestly, I don't remember anybody ever snacking. Well, vodka was okay any time of the day. Whenever I stayed with my uncle on a visit, as soon as I opened my eyes in the morning, he would be standing there with a four-ounce glass of vodka. Plesiewicz Josephine was my grandmother. Does this sound at all familiar? Sure, Helen. Of course, we all know each other. What? If you live in Gdańsk, as you claim, you know Polish culture. Then why is your name Hispanic and your profile pic is of a man on a sandy beach? As this may come out as a surprise to you, one, people do mix sometimes. So far, I'm not aware of any ghetto for non-white people anywhere in Poland that keep those pesky Hispanic named people like my father at bay. Two, shockingly, Due to Gdańsk being located on the seashore, we have some beautiful sandy beaches. I have lived in Gdańsk. There is no beach like that, lol. Where do you claim to have sandy beaches like in your pic? Christine, are you sure it was Gdańsk? Am I the only one that grew up thinking that they only played polkas in Poland? I was about to say, yes, Russell, you are the only one. But apparently, he's not. This is something I actually experienced myself. I once met two American guys at a club in Krakow and they were shocked to hear American music playing there. And polka is not even Polish, it originated in Czech Republic. I guess it must have been like super popular in Poland around the first wave of immigration. But even if it was Polish, the time still passes here. The music still progresses with time. We have Polish pop music. <laughs> Polish silver medalist in javelin throw Maria Andrzejczyk, who is also a devout Catholic, sold her Olympic medal in auction to find money for the heart surgery of a Polish boy. Polish store chain Żabka won the auction, but they returned the medal back to her. Such a beautiful story, which will never be told on TV. 
but it was on TV. Not where I live. Oh, they didn't tell you about that Polish athlete on Fox News? I guess it doesn't count then. Let's revisit the Atlantis metaphor for a moment. I think the worst part of the old world fantasy is the place for Polish people currently living in Poland now in that fantasy. They just seem to ruin it, especially when they correct someone's spelling or question the Polishness of their customs, then it can get ugly. The Polish wedding apron with six babies I created for our granddaughter Shelby at her wedding this last Saturday. As she danced, she explained that it was a symbol of entering into wife and motherhood, though six might be a bit too many babies. I grew up in Poland, attended so many weddings in different parts of Poland and never seen or heard of this tradition until I came here. So what? We did it here. It started with my Polish family, so it is Polish. Why should you care what I think? Who cares where it started? People of Polish descent did it. If any of you women are so insecure in who you are by thinking it is demeaning, so be it. I am proud to be a mom and busia. Yeah, let's start that too. Maybe if enough women were secure in that role, we wouldn't have all these messed up kids. Too old fashioned. Yeah, what's wrong with that? It's primitive and sexist. Sexist? To become a mother? Or do you believe men can be mothers too? Visiting the cemeteries today for All Saints Day weekend. Those stara baba make this picture. Those old hags indeed make this picture. I guess it depends on the region. My grandma always told me stara baba meant old lady. Is it written somewhere in stone that it means old hag? Just saying. No, Stacy, it's not written in stone. It's written in a dictionary. I don't think I want to be part of a group that allows mean comments like yours. I'm sorry I'm not Polish enough for you. Thanks for making me cry. A lot of mean people in this group. I'll go somewhere else where there are God-loving Polish folk who treat people with kindness. I thought that this was a group I'd be proud to be a part of. I guess not. God bless. I'm sorry that people treat you as if you are not Polish. I read once that there are more people of Polish heritage here in the US than in Poland. When you see a Western tourist crying because people didn't smile him back every two seconds. It may be a joke, but some of us don't think it's funny. Everyone has a right to their opinion. I think it is less funny to Western tourists than it is to some people who live in Poland. It was probably written by someone who does not have English as a first language, since the grammar is atrocious and just wrong. It's just a reminder that prejudice can exist anywhere, at any time. All of those smiling Western tourists also pour their money into Poland's struggling economy. I wonder how funny would it be if that money disappeared? We all know what Polish economy really relies on, and it's a Western tourist smile. This is funny, not the meme. The person who posted it may not even be from Poland. I'm not saying they definitely do not live in Poland, but check this out. This is a portion of what the poster wrote to me in a comment. By the way, I'd get rid of most of the tourists from Kraków. They're mostly drunk Brits destroying the city center. Tourism in Poland is only 1.3 GPD. We don't really care if Western snowflakes gonna get offended because of locals not smiling. First of all, they use the British spelling of center, which by itself is not a big thing, but most telling 
are the words snowflakes and gonna. Those words are almost used exclusively by Americans and maybe the British, especially snowflakes when referring to tourists. I don't know for certain, of course, but I'm just saying something feels a little off. It always fascinates me the way they think speaking more than one language works. Why does this recipe need to be outraged? Let's be kinder. Eastern Europeans cook similar recipes. Ridiculous. I hope someone will post something they learned from Babcia. The Poles that have lived under the communist regime are very ignorant and rude. Oh yes, here we go. The concept of Polish people being somehow corrupted by communism. It seems to be really popular. Oh, sorry, not Polish people, inhabitants of Poland. Never heard of buzia for babcia. Buzia means face or lips in Polish. Because you grew up under communist regime and not in the USA. Serious question for those of you who are cruel and mean still living in Poland. How and why are you such miserable people in this group and other Facebook groups? Polish people in US and Australia, for example, are not like this. Always exceptions. Why for those of you who stayed behind, why so mean to others? I know your lives in Poland, all the partitions, communism, now Russia breathing down Ukraine and others. Life must be hard and made you mean. Why? Polish people outside Poland are mostly very welcoming and kind, keeping traditions and food at all going. And you all in Poland are supposed to be religious. You're not kind at all, so who cares about your Catholicism when you behave so poorly? I 100% agree. The admin in this group needs to start kicking them out. My favorite is those young people in Poland who claim they love diversity, yet they bully, harass people who are innocently confused. Sadly, many Poles in Poland grow up in abusive households. It then contributes to a personality disorder. And well, we can always vote to pull out NATO. Have fun with Russian being your main language in the future. They are bitter because the dollar is still strong. It's nice to take Polish lessons for cheap online. It's probably only understood as an American thing, because on September 1st, 1939, all Polish history was rewritten. Yes, let's remember that most leaving Poles grew up as communists after five or six years of Nazi domination. They don't know the Poland that our ancestors knew, I believe both the Nazis and communists attacked the heritage and religions of the countries they ruled. So, for all we know, the young people from Poland who are here have an even more skewed vision of Poland than the perfect image our parents and grandparents painted for us. I've been to Poland twice, and no one who knows anything about that backward, fundamentally ignorant country gives a damn what they think. All the best Poles left 100 years ago and are Americans now. Yeah, I said it. Anyone who has problems with ancestry DNA tests in this group most likely has less Polish DNA than you do, no matter where they live. But they're the same ones who are going to try to tell you that your ancestors who were born in Poland were not Polish at all, just because they moved out of the country. That's insane, petty, and, as my mother always used to say, jealousy is awkward. Some of the native Poles think that their own limited experience of Poland should be everyone's experience of Poland. Some of the comments are cringeworthy from some of the Polish population which has obviously lost its way for so many years. It's evolution. It stopped when we left for America. The great thing is, now the Americans could take Poland back if we wanted. Yeah, that's that's great, sure. Europeans in general are unevolved Americans. The ones stuck in Poland failed to evolve further, like looking back in a time machine. It has become apparent that the current inhabitants of Poland hate America. 
The evolution has ceased. I'm proud to be American and proud to have Polish heritage. I wish the current Polish inhabitants would embrace their cousins who left for a better life. Yet, I am conflicted. With my family coming from East Prussia, Poland now, but part of the Prussian German Empire, my family spoke fluent German and Polish, but assimilated to America. Yes, we are a breed of dog. I'm just happy to have an overn European region as opposed to other areas of the world. Why such arrogance? Humor me. I'm first-generation Polish-American and full-blooded Polish, raised by 100% Polish parents and grandparents. My pedigree might be more Polish than yours. Why do they always talk about themselves as they are a dog breed? That's also a Facebook group, by the way. So what if we never visited our country? We can still honor it. I don't know. I, I would just never think of saying my country about a place that I've never been to. So here we are. Polish heritage. Great. Polish people better know your place. Let's be honest. For some of them, the Polishness is just a way to claim an identity other than white American. Celebrating being a white American is kind of a bad look, probably because of the long and recent history of white Americans oppressing non-white Americans. I feel like a lot of them treat being American as default and all of the other nationalities as some kind of weird races in a fantasy setting like elves and orcs. Then all these creatures came to the final land, which is America, and mixed to create an ultimate human, but you can still see some foreign blood in them, I guess. That's why they love DNA testing. In their heads, it is possible to separate that Polish gene in them and even count how many of them they have inside. But it doesn't work like that. Do you know that identical twins could send their DNA samples to the same DNA tracing company and receive completely different results? Because I learned that from that article on Vox. To understand how that's possible, we need to understand how those tests work. First of all, that they rely heavily on estimates. All of those companies test very specific strands of your DNA and compare them to the same fragments of DNA from people who already know their ancestry. So we already rely on declarative data. They compare you to people who claim they are Polish. Another thing is the sample size. It varies drastically depending on the region. Most of the samples come from countries where DNA testing is more popular. And let's be honest, those tend to be more white parts of the world. It's mostly white people who are obsessed with fighting Vikings or medieval kings in their family tree. So it's more likely your sample will match with a sample from those regions. But as DNA testing becomes more and more popular in countries like India or China, in a few years, your results will probably be different. That's why it's not very wise to get these kinds of tattoos. Another issue is the process itself. The labs that do the testing claim that their tests are 99.9% .9 accurate, which sounds impressive. But if you test 1 million fragments of DNA, that's 1000 mistakes, and that can affect your results significantly. There's also an algorithm involved in that process, and that algorithm also operates on estimates. It has to, because the genetic differences between people living in Europe, for example, are almost non-existent. That's why it's so confusing for Americans. Let's say your DNA test says you're mostly Polish, but your grandma claims to be Lithuanian, and the postcards you found in her attic are in Russian. How to figure it all out in a world where borders and cultures are so fluent. These tests are a good starting point if you want to find out more about your ancestors or find your distant relatives. But I would be very cautious with connecting your national identity with your genes. For me, nationality is above all the language and cultural codes, memes, not genes. 
It's simply something you cannot express in percentages. I feel like we already tried that other approach in Europe and it didn't end well. There is nothing wrong with exploring the culture of your ancestors, being interested in their language and customs. I don't even mind if you want to cultivate traditions that only exist in your specific diaspora. And that's why, Shelley, feel free to dance in your fetus embroidered apron on your wedding day. I don't care. Just don't call yourself Polish ever again. I'm kidding. Call yourself whatever you want. It's fine. Just don't be surprised if people from other parts of the world will be a little confused. And just one more thing to end on a high note. The story of I Love My Polish Heritage Group would not be complete without Bobert, whose utter disappointment with Poland went kind of viral some time ago on Reddit. Since then, he became a mascot of some sort, a symbol of all the Polish Americans of how they truly perceive Poland. Robert, affectionately called Bobert by my friends on Twitter, said the following. I just returned from Kraków and found out that being a Polish American means nothing. I was so disappointed by the lack of interest or even respect I received from the Polish people about my Polish heritage. They didn't care. They were nice, a bit standoffish, but eager to be nice enough to recognize that I was spending a ton of money in the country of my ancestors. Kraków was beautiful, the food was great, the hospitality good, but it mattered very little that I was of Polish heritage. I was very disappointed in that aspect and probably will never visit Poland again. You'll think that people in Poland should treat Poles better than they treat people from other nations or ethnicities? And that as an American with Polish heritage you should be entitled to better treatment than people from different nations? No, not better, but not just dismissed and told it was unimpressive and unimportant. When I meet Poles traveling over here, I am excited and eager to help. And yes, maybe a little more eager and helpful because we share a heritage and ethnicity. I am nice and helpful as I can be to everyone, but for a Pole, I would go the extra mile. Honestly, what were your expectations? How did you want people to behave when you told them you had Polish roots? Majority people in Poland have relatives living outside of Poland and are not impressed because somebody with Polish ancestry visits their country. It is a common occurrence. Not really my point. I am of the same ethnicity, the same ancestors, keep many of the same customs and traditions. Yes, I expected to be treated as if we were from the same tribe more so than someone who has nothing whatsoever in common with the Polish people. I did not, nor would I, expect the red carpet to ever be rolled out for me. And trust me, I was not hurt, just disappointed. Disappointed in the lack of historical knowledge of the connection between America and Poland, a connection not felt or experienced between any other two countries throughout history. Maybe it's because of communism and for 40 years America was vilified by the communist government that you have forgotten the kinship and the brotherhood that Americans and Poles have felt for each other since the days of Kościuszko. If you are Polish-American, that means nothing to Polish nationals. You might as well be from China or Russia. You could be 100% Polish and they will still dismiss you. So you did put down Poland, get your story straight. Do you really want a return to socialism? How happy are you with the Ukrainian situation? Ready to vote yes on giving them more socialistic entitlement money? We beat Mexico in 1846 and beat the British and Canada. Getting lessons from Poland on how to protect ourselves is like getting lessons on speaking in public from Joe Biden. Damn, he got us with that one, I'll be honest. We shouldn't be enemies, Jakub. I do not want to blow my own horn, but I have taught history for 30 years. I have doctorate in jurisprudence and a master's degree in world history. My father, 100% Polish, also had a master's in world history and after 30 years in the Air Force, taught it in the university. 
He explained to me the history of Poland from when I was very young. Poland is a very hard country to defend, and that's why they have been invaded so many times over the years. Stopping the Turkish port was an amazing feat of John Soboleski. I know of Polish history and bravery, I will never belittle it. That was my point. I am proud of my Polish heritage, that's all, that's the only point I was trying to make. But because I am an American, it was diminished, belittled and I was put down for loving Poland as an American. Who the fuck is John Soboleski? As a history teacher with 30 years of experience, you should know it was Jan III Sobieski. Hmm. At the castle in Kraków, this is how they referred to him, as I had studied him years before. This one trip to Kraków turned out to be such a canon event in Bobert's life that it permanently broke something in his psyche. I started to feel sorry for him. I even wanted to make a crowdfunding campaign to bring him back and give him a proper Polish greeting this time with folk dresses on and bread and vodka and polka dancing. But then the question of Bobert's Polishness was finally resolved when he asked What is XD? I'm sorry, Bobert, your Polak card has been revoked. <laughs>